Trout Spay Casting School today. This is going to be part one out of a two-part series. I did all this casting instruction right out in front of Red's Fly Shop, and I originally tried to make a video where I did all the presentation techniques and caught some fish and taught the casting and all of it in one video. It's just impossible. I think uh, it's worth investing some time in watching this entire video, even if you have to come back a couple of times and even rewatch a couple of the more technical parts. If you're going to get good at trout spay uh, or just Skagit style casting in general, it's definitely worth spending some time getting an understanding of the cast before you actually get to the water. I see so much growth and progress in anglers that have a deep understanding of how the cast works before they get out there and start hacking away. Uh, as you watch the video, I think it's really a, a great idea to get the bottom half of your rod or the bottom section of your rod out and actually participate in some of the, the kinetic movement of the different casts so that when I'm explaining cack handed, versus casting over your dominant side, you can actually take and copy me in the comfort of your own living room. And I think it's a great learning tool to be able to do that. So I think that's a really good tip before you watch this. The other thing is, again, go back and watch a couple of the more complicated parts to have an understanding. Now, trout spay fishing to me, I'm very passionate about it because I think it, one, I enjoy it personally. Selfishly, yes, I love spay fishing in general but I really like spay fishing for trout because there's lots of grabs and lots of hookups. But I'm passionate about sharing it with all of you because it is a great do-it-yourself angler adventure. It's meant to be done on foot. It's a very simple gear set. There's not a lot of untangling, not a lot of retying, not a lot of snagging. And I think an angler's satisfaction level goes through the roof when they get this two-handed rod in their hands. Yes, you'll certainly have some success hooking some nice trout, but I want you to stay focused on just getting good at the, the discipline of the casting, learning how to swing and present flies, and the catching will take care of itself, I promise. But I think you're really going to enjoy kind of a break from the, this what can be stressful situations when it comes to fishing nymphs, um, especially slackline nymph fishing or indicator nymphing, where we have a few tangles, we got a few snags, we're generally running light tippet. Maybe we're even using a little split shot or multiple flies. If you'd like a break from all that, swinging a single fly on a nice tight line where you feel the fish pick that fly up and you get to feel all the energy of that trout directly through that tight line. It's a really nice break from all that. So I think there's a lot of reasons that people might want to jump into this. Now, who's this video for? Maybe you already have the rod and you haven't had that casting success uh, that you feel like you should have. Watch this video and go back to the basics and gain an understanding of it. Also, if you're thinking about diving into trout spay, go in armed with the best intel that you can. Yes, the video is about 45 minutes to an hour, but there's just so much good information in there and you're not going to be able to take it all in at once. So, so watch it a couple of times. Um, the other thing I want to explain is Skagit style casting is a little bit different than traditional spay casting. You'll hear this in the video, but I want to reiterate it up front because I think a lot of people have misconceptions about spay casting in general. Skagit style casting is a very slow cast. It develops slowly right up until that very last bit of the cast is really the only thing that moves quickly in the entire sequence of the Skagit style cast. It's slow and it is designed to cast sink tips and weighted flies reasonable distances. We don't have to cast 80 feet in order to be a proficient spay caster. We need to cast 30 to 40 feet. We need to do it very consistently and lay that fly out very clean. So as you dive into this, I want you to cast small flies that don't hold a lot of water, that don't have giant dumbbell eyes on them. Just cast a, a small bugger is a really great way to start. I'll put a few flies that I recommend in the video description. But a Skagit system is composed of a running line, which I have a very thick, or excuse me, a very thin mono running line here. 30 pound OPST laser line. My whole setup is listed in the video description. That transitions into a shooting head, which is where all the mass is. These are measured in grains. And 
this uh, loop to loop connection right there connects my mono running line to my shooting head. And that way, if I ever wanted to change my shooting head, maybe for another rod or try something else, I could. Some lines are going to be integrated and it's all going to morph into one another. There are pros and cons to that. I personally prefer a modular system. The Skagit style cast is going to be cast with this knot on this loop. There's a loop there where I loop the loop it just outside the rod tip. So each time you'll always strip up right to the edge of the shooting head. And that's where your cast begins is just the shooting head is out. I recommend casting one rod length of line uh, and, until you become very proficient. Make sure that you're able to do that with the most minimal effort possible to get the maximum result. In fly casting, I can't tell you how important that is. Minimal effort, maximum result. That way, when you do, in fact, lean on that rod and put a little muscle into it eventually, you're actually going to get a return on your energy. You'll become the best caster you can be when you learn how to use minimal effort, maximum result. The shooting head itself, a Skagit shooting head, is going to be very thick. It's going to be very short in comparison to traditional spay heads. In fact, my shooting head is only 12 feet long on this little OPST commando. And no Skagit head is complete without a tip. So that's going to go out to my leader out there. Loop to loop connection there goes out to the tip. And then your leader is often going to be just about three to five feet. Five feet is a really good average leader length for that system. So go into this video with um, the mindset of a student. Watch it a couple of times. Get good at it. Your cast will be incredible. I'm going to iterate a couple of points that come back in the video before we get started that I think are just blueprint points for everything we're going to talk about here. As you get started, there are two casts that you have to know, and you have to know both of them, and that's going to be a double spay and a snap T. Those are the two casts and the only two casts. There are, each of those two casts have four variate or two variations. Uh, for whether you're on the left side of the river or the right side of the river. So it's a total of four, four particular casts, but they're both going to be a snap tee and a double spay. I go through all this in the video, but it's very important that you start to memorize this stuff. So that way, when you're standing out there in the river, you have a pretty good idea of what to do. The other thing you're going to hear a lot about, and I'm going to say it right now before you start getting distracted by the casting, and that's going to be that each of those casts has three ingredients. And that's going to be an anchor, a D-loop, and then the cast. And that is really going to be your, your foundation for when you're having a little bit of trouble. Your cast isn't working right and things aren't going well. You have to go back to, am I doing the right cast for the correct side of the river? And am I getting all the parts in the right order? Am I doing the anchor, the D-loop, and the cast? So without further ado, let's just go ahead and roll into the video. But I think if you're serious about getting good at this, which I get excited about because I love this type of fishing, pay attention to the video. Like I said, visit a couple of times and watch it through its entirety and be able to memorize these things. So that way, when you get out there in the river, you have the absolute best possible experience. Fishing right. Now we're going to do two casts. One's going to be called a snap tee. The other one's going to be called a double spay, and I'm going to demonstrate those now, and then we'll dissect those casts very, very carefully as we go. The, the first one I'll just show you uh, is going to be a snap T. I'm going to throw it from what would be river left, and I'm going to snap the fly up like this, and I'm going to cast off my right shoulder just like that right there. That's most every right-hand dominant caster's strongest cast when they're river left. Very easy cast to learn. We'll break it down here in a few minutes. The other one's going to be called a double spay. A double spay is an absolutely critical Skagit style cast. And I'm going to cast this off my off shoulder or what we might call cack handed. You'll hear me say cack handed quite a bit during the video. And that's just simply casting off my non dominant shoulder. I cast with my rod, my right hand up on the rod. That double spay for river left is going to be a cack handed cast. Now we're just gonna step out here a couple steps. Let's go ahead and come on out, Cameron. And we're just gonna do the same cast on the other side so that you just kind of get this global introduction to these casts. So I'm gonna do the same cast I just did with the double spay, but I'm gonna do it on my dominant shoulder here. I'm on my right hand side, just like that. 
very, very easy cast. Now I'm gonna take a couple steps away here. I'm gonna get my line out of the shallows and just do what's called clearing it or resetting it. Now I'm ready to show you a snap T, but I'm gonna do it on my cack handed side. This cast is a little bit more challenging for a lot of folks to learn. Couldn't shoot all my line, it would have went up on the shore. But we're gonna dissect these casts. These are the only casts that you need to know to get started and begin having a lot of success uh, with your spay casting. So I wanna run over a couple of like just general principles first, and then we'll break that cast down in great detail. And I encourage you to go back and watch the video a couple of different times for each individual cast as we break those down. Skagit style casting is very, very short shooting head, uses a sink tip 90% of the time and, and probably a lightly weighted fly most of the time. Skagit casting, was spawned specifically to throw sink tips and weighted flies at reasonable distances. You don't have to cast a country mile in order to catch trout. I think you've heard me say this before if you follow the channel is, you wouldn't take your single-handed rod out here and just cast as far as you possibly can hoping to catch a fish. That would be just silly and ludicrous. But I wanna show you a couple things about Skagit casting that are different than traditional casting so that we learn to, to kind of segregate the two. Skagit style casting, and I'm gonna throw a double spay off my left shoulder, is a very, very slow, slowly develop, it slowly develops until that very end of the final shot. It's very quiet, it's very slow, it's very methodical. Sink tips and weighted flies, they don't do very well when we try to hurry and go fast. So Skagit style casting is very, very slow. And there's a term that that I heard early on when I was learning to cast that really stuck with me. And it, my mentor hammered it home to me and it's that Skagit style casting is a sustained anchor cast. And before I teach you any of these casts, I wanna make sure that you understand a sustained anchor cast. A sustained anchor cast, and this is gonna be true of all the casts that we learned today, is my fly, once I reposition it strategically in what's called an anchor, and I'll explain all of that in the next chapter, my fly has to stay connected to the water. That's what allows me to bend and flex this rod is my fly and line are touching the water. It's like a, it's like a roll cast, essentially. So a roll cast doesn't work very well when we just go and do it in the air. My line has nothing to grip, and that's what we see a lot of when people are learning. So a sustained anchor cast, I'm gonna strategically reposition the line, that's called my anchor, and then my fly is gonna stay connected with the water until I actually make my final stroke or shoot the line. So it's slow and it's sustained anchor. The next layer of this onion is gonna be that there are gonna be three parts to every one of these casts. This is very important because when you get out in the river, things are gonna go a little sideways. As long as you understand these three parts, and this is the meat of the video right here, understand these three distinct parts and how to put those ingredients together to build a good cast, okay? We're gonna talk about the three parts and regardless of what cast I do, they're gonna have the same three ingredients. Those are gonna be an anchor, a D loop, and then the cast. Yes. So let's talk about the anchor. The anchor I define is just a strategic repositioning of the fly. So right now my line's hanging down in the current. Let's just take you through what it would look like if we threw a presentation, okay? So I, I blast my fly out, I give her a nice mend, my fly is sinking, 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 and right about there it begins to tighten up and now my fly is swimming across the river. I can give it a few jigs or do some action, but I'm trying to, trying to essentially make it look like the critter on the end of my line is coming from the substrate on the bottom of the river and swimming in. But each cast is gonna end hanging somewhat below me. Now, if I, if I feel the line go totally slack, I wanna make sure and strip that line up right away before I snag. But now what I'm dealt with is my line is just hanging straight down below me. It's not in a very strategic arrangement for me to cast. So I have to strategically arrange my line and my fly in order to make the next cast. So already we have like a, an understanding that I need to take this line from where it is. One, it's probably sunk down kind of deep because I've got my sink tip on there. Two, it's just hanging straight below me. So the first thing I've got to do is I've got to reposition that line around me. And I think this is really easy with trout spay gear to gain an understanding 
because what I want to do on either cast, and the two casts that we're going to learn on both sides are going to be a double spay and a snap T. Either one of those casts, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to set about half the line above me and half the line below me. And don't worry about the details right now. We're going to anchor differently for the snap T. The snap T is going to look something like that. That's okay. My double spay is going to look something like this. Either one of those casts on either side of the river, I have to have about half the line above me and half the line below me. And the fly has to be within a rod length and a half of me on the approximate angle. I don't want to get too technical here, but the approximate angle that I'm going to cast. So if I'm going to cast slightly downstream as I anchor, half the line above, half the line below, my fly slightly below me. Now, this is a hard, fast rule, okay? Half the line above, half the line below. Now, this piece of information, write this on your hand. The fly has to be on the side of my body that I'm going to throw my cast. Has to, has to, has to. I don't care. It's not a matter of opinion. It's a rule of physics. So if I'm going to cast off my left shoulder, maybe I've got a tree or even a cameraman right here, my fly has to settle into the anchored position on the left side of my body, okay? Now let's say I've either got a nasty upstream wind or I've got a tree on my left side. Now let me step over here and I'm gonna do that snap T cast, same thing. Half the line below, half the line above, fly slightly upstream of myself because when I cast off my right shoulder and I'm gonna go ahead and execute the cast right here, the fly has to be on my right side, otherwise I will hook myself or I will tangle the line. So in review. Definition of the anchor, strategic repositioning of the line for the snap T and the double spay, half the line above, half the line below, and the fly has to be on whichever shoulder I happen to be using, depending on the cast. That is the anchor. It is the absolute cornerstone of the Skagit cast and all spay casting in general. If you don't have a good anchor, you have absolutely zero chance at a good cast. So that's the first thing that you're going to do when you get out in the water is work on your anchoring. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is going to be the D-loop. So we've learned how to anchor the fly. We understand at least the basics of anchoring. Um, we'll talk real specifically about anchoring as we dissect each cast. The next step is going to be the D-loop. A big D-loop means a big cast, and we have to have a D-loop in order to generate energy. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to ask you to just kind of mentally freeze frame the video, and you can even hit pause and then use your mouse to kind of go back and forth so that you could see the D shape. So what the D shape is gonna be is, it doesn't matter what cast I throw, right there, freeze. You can see that there's a D shape and it'll be a backwards capital D for you with my rod up as the vertical post of the D and then my line kicked back into a D shape like that right there. So that's the D loop. Every cast has to have a D loop. If we don't have a D loop, we can't have a cast. And guess what? Unless you anchor the fly right, you're not gonna get a D loop. So again, we'll go back to the cornerstone of the cast is the anchor. We set the anchor up right. The fly is no more than a rod length and a half from us. Then we can generate a D loop because we have enough slack in order to do so. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw this cast full speed and then you can back the video up if you need to in order to identify that D shape that you saw right there. Fly is still connected to the water because we've already learned the Skagit style cast is a sustained anchor cast and the D loop itself comes next. And then the final step is gonna be the final cast. But a couple of things about the D loop. It's about the D loop. A D loop is pretty easy to make as long as we anchor the fly well, that is absolutely critical. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw a D loop off my right side here. This is gonna be my snap T. Again, don't worry about the details. D right there, you can see it. I had a nice D shape right there with my sink tip coming back into the D and then being propelled forward like that. So we've got two steps. We've got an anchor and we've got a D loop. Now let's move on to the third critical part of every Skagit style cast. So let's talk about the shot, the power stroke, getting ascended, letting the big dog eat, okay? So 
let's just say we've anchored, we've set the D loop, and now we're in a poised position to where we're gonna have the final shot. Now, the final shot is gonna be me applying power with my bottom hand, the rod lagging and flexing like this, my upper hand, and I tend to grip about two thirds the way up most of my rods, and then my other grip, I'll probably do a whole segment about the grip, but I'm gonna barely hold it on the bottom of the rod just like this. And I'm gonna, I've set my line up and now I'm just gonna make my shot. And it's important for me to keep my hands very tight. I see a lot of people with their rod out here, very bad habit, keep it tight, keep your arms in, stay tight and pull that bottom hand right into your stomach. The rod tip motion should be very flat on top. We shouldn't have this rotational arc like this right here with the cast. We should actually have, a, a the word that really works for me is the rod tip should be drug along and then rotated. So translation is me loading the rod here by sliding or dragging forward. And then the end of the cast is rotation. And that's where I give it the power boost. That's really the only part of the Skagit cast where we actually move very quickly is the rotation at the end of the power stroke. So say I've set up, I've kicked my D loop back and swept it back. And now I'm going to translate and I'm going to rotate to a stop just like that. And I think it's very important that we bring that bottom hand right into our stomach so that we can't over rotate and bring the rod tip down too close to the water. That's very, very critical. So bring that right into your stomach and we drag first and then we rotate. And that's my final power stroke just like that. We're gonna dissect that even deeper as we go into each individual cast, but those are the three parts of the cast. Anchor, D-loop, power stroke to finish the cast. Let's talk about rod grip for a minute and just a tip for fly casting in general. Pretend you have a baseball and I want you to just, wherever you're sitting right now, just take and pretend you're throwing a baseball or a rock or something or skipping a rock. Now I want you to take that same imaginary ball that you're throwing and I want you to grip very, very tight. I want you to grab a hold of that thing really tight. And then I want you to try to throw that thing. You can see immediately if you actually went through the exercise that a tight grip is detrimental to articulating good smooth motion. The rod is the same way, whether it's a single hander or a two hander, it's the same. But in two hand fishing, we really see a big problem if people grip the rod too tight. So when you get your rod out, I want you to find an approximate balance point and don't get caught up in the fact whether your rod balances slightly tip down or slightly tip up. I want you to get just a nice comfortable point and I want you to lay it on your index finger here and then just gently wrap the remainder of your, your hand around it. When it comes to the bottom hand, you'll watch experienced bay casters. For, for the most part, we just general, or generally grip that rod with just our thumb and forefinger so that that rod can then pivot, um, can then pivot uh, in our hand. Stuck on the bottom there for a second. But regardless of the cast I throw, if you see my hands here, I've gotta be able to, to pivot that rod around. No matter what I'm doing, whether it's a poke or a cast uh, or an anchor or anything else, that rod has to pivot in my hand. So I have to hold it very gently and very loosely in order to get that motion to articulate. So a very light grip is important, okay? Very, very important, very important. The, the next thing that you wanna understand before we start just, I mean, firing shots down range is on all of these casts, your hands are gonna have to exchange places, generally three times during every single cast. And what I mean by that is my hands have to stay very close to my body in order for them to exchange because this is a leverage system. It's a fulcrum and lever system. And when I go to exchange uh, places in my hands, I'm gonna break the rod apart here for a second just so I can do this right in front of the camera. But regardless of whether it's a double spay or a snap T, my hands are going to exchange places and cross. And that's the origin of your casting power is this leverage that I have. And if I'm gripping the rod tight, it becomes very difficult in order for me to do that. And if I don't cross and uncross my hands, I'm not gonna get that rotational energy. And that rotational energy is needed in the anchor, it's needed in the D loop, and it's needed in the cast. So it's very important that we grip the rod loosely and try that thumb and forefinger grip on the very bottom of the rod before you start doing these casts. 
And I would encourage you, if you're watching this video and you're just on the couch somewhere and you have your rod handy, get it out and play with it a little bit and just work on that idea and that understanding of crossing and uncrossing your hands. And that's gonna be the first part of the, the lesson when it comes to the double spay is crossing and uncrossing. So we're gonna jump into the river left cast now. We'll start with the double spay and then we'll work into the snap tee. Okay, so here we go. We're actually gonna start working on cast now. You've learned a whole bunch of stuff. Um, most critical thing you wanna know is anchor D-loop cast. Those are the ingredients. Always remember that when you get a case the shanks and things aren't going well for you. We're gonna start with a double spay off my left shoulder. So I'm on the left side of the river. I'm trying to cast out here and present my fly to these big trout that are laying out in that swift water. So I've got the rod just kind of laid on my hand very delicately. And now I've got the, the rod or the butt between my thumb and my forefinger right here. So just kind of right in the crease of my hand, just like that. Now my first step is gonna to be to anchor. And, and what, I, what I like to do is I'm gonna clear my line first and I'm gonna get that sink tip right up on the surface. Okay, that's a, just a little tip. And if you hear any snapping sounds or anything when you're doing that, you're doing something called blowing your anchor and we'll talk a lot about that here in a minute. But I wanna set my line just right out there on the surface so that my anchor is very easy. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna raise up to 45 degrees and I'm gonna have a tiny pause and then I'm gonna let my line flop down just like that right there. Now, my, my hands are very loose and I've taken my hands from a crossed position. So you're gonna start with your hands crossed in an X for this cast and my rod comes up to 45, my hands uncross, and I've driven my left hand downstream of myself. So my reel is physically below my left hip. I have found that to be a huge advantage for some reason. When I teach anglers this, I see a lot of success. When I see them push their left hand out, straighten their elbow and push that hand down. So I'm gonna go ahead and reset my line, and I'm gonna have my hands crossed up to 45, and I'm gonna flop my line up just like this right here, okay? My fly was properly anchored, just barely over a rod length for myself. And uh, you can actually measure that when you see your fly, you can actually reach your rod out right after you anchor. Sometimes it's okay to reach your rod out and actually get a measurement on that, but it can't be more than a rod length and a half away with these short rods. If it's more than a rod length and a half away, I can't get the D loop, which is my next step. So. I'm looking for a nice J shape in my shooting head. And with the, with the little shooting head I have here, this OPST commando head, it's really convenient because for most of my anchoring, I've got a 12 foot head, I've got a 12 foot sink tip and a little bit of leader. And if I position the end of the shooting head straight in front of me, it works really great. And I want a nice J shape on the water. I don't want a harsh V. And I'm gonna show you what that V looks like because it's one of the most it's one of the most common errors in the double spay. Cameron, go ahead and show them what that V shape look, looks like on the water there. So if you anchor and you have a sharp angle with your shooting head and your line right there, what happens is, is I go to set the D loop up and now I've got a big curl of slack in there. And that's yucky. The rod is loaded, then it's unloaded, and then it's loaded. It's an unsatisfying, noisy, inefficient cast. So what I want is I wanna bring my anchor up and I want a nice J shape. And I'm gonna to try to do that right now. I'm gonna back up a little bit so I don't injure the cameraman with my fly here. There we go. So I had a nice rounded curl with that shooting head off the end of my rod tip. That's how we're gonna set up a perfect D loop and have a great cast on our anchor. The end of the shooting head is gonna be out in front of me on these little trout space gadget setups. A nice curve off the end of my rod tip and the fly is gonna be in front of my left shoulder just over a rod length away from myself. If, you're, if, you're, if your fly is closer than a rod length, that's a little bit of a problem. You're probably gonna have a little slack in there. So be diligent about looking at where that fly gets anchored. So now we're gonna work on developing a D-loop. This is the fun part. This is when the action begins to happen. So uh, watch the anchor section a couple of times so you've really got it down pat. Now I come up to 45, I make my anchor. You've worked on that. I've got my nice J shape. The end of my shooting head is pretty much straight in front of me. 
And that's an excellent just landmark or a marker for a cast that's going to go just slightly downstream. So generally the highest upstream we cast in Skagit style fishing is just going to be 90 degrees. Once in a while we'll cast upstream. But if we're casting just slightly downstream in kind of this 10 to 15 uh, degree window, the end of my shooting head can be right in front of me. So here I go. I come up. I got a nice anchor. Now, as I go to make my D-loop, I'm very delicately holding the rod. My rod is pointed away from my fly. That's a real key when you finish your anchor is my fly's down here, my rod's up here. Now, that's really important because my cast has to build energy starting all the way from my rod being here, all the way around, all the way into the D-loop as I poise for my shot. I had all of that span right there to begin building energy. And what we see a lot of in, in, in new casters here at Reds when we're teaching is we see a lot of people, I got a leaf on there now, of course. I see a lot of people, they wind up anchoring and their rod only gets up to right here and it's not pointed away from the fly. So I have to have my rod pointed away from my fly. Now, as I build my D-loop, I've got my hands uncrossed now. Again, they were crossed, now they're uncrossed. Now I'm ready to, to, to build my D-loop. When I build my D-loop, I wanna take, and my hands are physically gonna cross again like this. And as I'm doing that, my rod is gonna stay very, very level all the way across. Very common mistake. And when I, when I explain it to you now, if you're, if you're really listening and paying attention, you're gonna remember this forever. As I anchor, a lot of people tend to get the rod up high and then they go, oh, I've got to bring the rod down. And then the rod comes up high again. And what I've done is I've loaded and unloaded and reloaded the rod. It becomes a very sloppy, weak, inefficient cast. And then what people do, some of you watching have done this, then just through sheer force, you wind up making the cast and you go, geez, I got it. You know, I shot all the line out there or whatever, but it was done so in an extremely inefficient manner. So as we build the D-loop, I gotta get this leaf off my fly here. And I don't know if you saw how I, how I pulled that in, but as you get used to these longer rods, everything becomes really easy to just get the line back and check your fly. But let's just get that, get that leaf off of there. That's gonna make things a lot easier. So throw my fly back in here and we'll, we'll get back to work on the D-loop. Now in this situation, I have a railroad grade right over there. Take a look at that railroad grade. And that railroad grade provides me a very nice level horizon. And you can use treetops or even use the edge of the river as a marker or a line which you're going to parallel. So I'm going to go ahead and anchor and my D-loop is going to go parallel with the tracks into this position here. I formed my D-loop. As you can see, I had a nice D-loop and I'm here poised in this power position to, to translate and then rotate and make my final shot. But the D-loop is very important that we, we cross our hands back in the double spay, sweep up and make my shot like that without bringing the rod up and bringing it down and bringing it back up. The rod can only raise once. So I sweep around into the D-loop, the rod raises once. I'm now in the power position. The fly is still anchored in the water and I've got a great cack handed double spay. Let's take a look at this real time as though I'm fishing. Anchor, D-loop is level. Make my power shot just like that right there. Throw it like that. That big streamer just put a drop of water in my ear. That was a little startling. <laughs> That'll happen with these flies that hold a lot of water. But yeah, my power shot goes out, hand comes to my belly, my hands aren't here. And notice my rod stop very high on any of your spay casts. As you finish, the rod should always have a high stopping point. And what you wanna do is you can pick a treetop or a mark on a cliff or the horizon and don't let your rod drop below that point. It's very common for people to have to bring their rods all the way down. The reason is they had a poor D-loop, probably from a poor anchor. We're on river right. So as I'm looking downstream, I'm now on the right side of the river and I'm gonna fish this beautiful riffle right out here. Now what I've got for a situation is I've got a strong down canyon wind. Anytime you can cast with a fly on the downwind side of you, you're going to be an advantage. And in spay casting, casting with the fly downwind of me and on the downstream side of me, it's a really good situation. It's an easy cast. Now I'm going to run through a double spay 
and I'm just gonna throw a cast here and we're gonna fire it out. And I'm gonna let my fly swing and I'm gonna throw one more of these just so that you can see it real time. And I'll strip in a little bit up to the edge of my shooting head. The rod's gently laid in my hand and I'm gonna run through my ingredients, my anchor, my D loop, and then my cast, just like that. Those are the three ingredients. Write it on your hand, tattoo it on your hand, anchor, D loop, cast. So with a, with a double spay river right for a right-handed caster, it's a really nice, easy cast. So I start with the rod very delicately balanced on my finger. Again, we have a very light grip and I'm just gonna gently grip it on my forefinger. Now it's the opposite of the other side. The other side, I would have my hands crossed. With this, as I go to anchor and bring my fly up, now my hands are crossed into an X. Very important. That's where my power is gonna be generated from. As I uncross my hands, that's when my rod begins to load and gets into that deal. So let's go ahead and start again. And uh, components of the anchor, fly, rod length, rod length and a half from me, uh, position generally where I wanna cast, half the line on my right, half the line on my left, the end of my shooting head on this OPST commando head straight in front of me. So come up to 45, I'm gonna flop my hands into an X like this. Now I'm gonna bring my rod tip level, okay, just like this. In position for a D loop, I've got this line in a capital D shape, just like so behind me, ready for the shot. Anchor, D loop, cast. All right, let's give her a rip again. So rod up, hands are gently positioned on the rod. Anchor, looks good. D loop, looks good. Cast, looks pretty good. Anchor, D loop, cast. Fly is always staying on the right side of me. Fly is always touching the water until, once I anchor, the fly is always touching the water until I make that final shot. The double spay is a wonderful, wonderful cast. Here I go again, anchor, D loop, cast. Just like so, works great. So one more thing just about the, uh, the anchor and we'll see if the light allow us for this. Uh, but I want you to look because we have the light behind us at that little curl or that J that comes off my rod tip with the shooting head. J, just like that. J or a curve, just not a V shape. I'm gonna show you a V shape. V shape right there, that's terrible. That's not gonna work at all because as soon as I go to make my D loop, you can see that slack on the water, that curl. Let's do it again. My line's in a V. That's not gonna be good. If I anchor and my line's in a V and I go to make my D loop, you can see I just made slack in my line. That's going to be an ugly cast, people. So here we go. Anchor, D loop, cast. We're rocking. That's my double spay, just like that. There's lots of other little tips, but I think that's going to be just the right amount of information to get most of you started Skagit style casting with your little trout spay rods. So now we're going to talk about the snap tee. Okay. So we've learned we've learned the three key ingredients. That's going to be the anchor, the D loop right there and then my, my final shot or my power shot. I'm gonna keep beating that into your head. So we're still on river left, but I have a circumstance here that I need to cast off my right shoulder. And that could be for a whole bunch of different reasons. It could be a tree or a boulder here. Uh, it could be an upstream wind, but I need to cast off my right, which I want to anyways, because I'm right-handed dominant. Now the same rules for anchoring apply. I need to strategically reposition this line with half the line above me and half the line below me in the fly on the correct side of my body. So my fly needs to wind up on my right if I'm gonna cast on the right. So my line is now hanging below me. I'm gonna come up to 45 and my hands are essentially crossed. Let's just, they're not physically crossed in the same, to the same degree they were during the double spay, but my hands are essentially crossed right here. I come up to 45 and I'm gonna bring that fly up right above me like that on the right side. And then I'm gonna make my final shot like so. So that's how the snap tee is going to work. Now, how do we get there? <laughs> now, anchoring the snap tee is the only real hard part. The rest of it's very intuitive. And casters always pick this one up really, really quickly. But what I'm going to do is when I raise up to 45, I'm going to take five. I'm going to take my rod tip and I'm going to throw my rod tip upstream. And then I'm going to. and then I'm gonna duck my rod tip under that fly. And during the, the double spay lesson, I made a comment 
about how the rod tip has to be pointed away from the fly. That's really, really important in snap tee. And the snap tee is also, it lives by a couple of names. Some people call it the circle spay. Uh, some people call it a snap Z. Snap tee is just a common name. But when I go to make this anchor, it's gonna be very important that my rod comes up over to the upstream side and then my rod tip ducks under that fly. So you could do it with your finger right there, wherever you're sitting, you raise up to 45, and I'm really gonna draw more of a number seven than a T, okay? So it's really gonna be kind of a number seven. So my rod tip comes up, I come over for the top of the seven, and then I angle it down. So maybe a V turned on its side, but a number seven, it's really gonna go like this. So take your finger up, over in a slow motion, and then go down quickly. When you go down quickly, we're really killing the momentum and I'm bringing my rod tip back downstream. So I'm gonna do it right over your head here. So I'm here, I'm ready to anchor. I raise up and I snap under. Look how low my rod tip is. Very, very low. I'm gonna finish low just like that. And I'm learning to anchor. When you first learn the snap tee, the anchor is so hard. I encourage you to just anchor and then throw the fly back downstream. Anchor, throw the fly back downstream. Anchor, just throw the, I'm not gonna shoot line, I'm not gonna get tempted, I'm just gonna learn to anchor. And I'm doing it right. I've got half the line here, half the line there. I've got the fly just over a rod length away from myself right there. I'm set up really, really well for the next step, which is gonna be the D-loop. So the snap tee is one of those that really takes a lot of practice on the anchor. You're definitely gonna fail and struggle a little bit. But if we just remember those ingredients for the anchor, where my fly has to be within a rod length to a rod length and a half of me on my right side. And my rod tip needs to be pointed generally about, you know, 50 to 60 degrees away from the fly, the opposite direction. Then I can uncross my hands. I can follow that level plane. For me, it's a set of railroad tracks over there. It really works quite well as a barrier for doing a lesson right here. I throw my D loop back and then my power stroke shoots forward. Hand comes right into the belly just like that. But the anchor is really, really critical with the snap tee. And again, you can just take, it's easier with your finger than the rod the first time. You take your finger up, you drive upstream, and then you kill it coming down. It's very important that that rod tip ducks under the fly because you will hang your fly on the rod tip when you're first learning to do this. And that's the snap tee. Again, one more time, I strip the fly up, up to 45 with my rod, snap under, swing around, nice D loop, nice kill shot with the rod tip stopping up high just like that. That's your second cast on river left, snap tee. And for me, that's off my left shoulder and I'm gonna do what's called a cack handed snap tee. Repeat after me, cack handed snap tee. Cack handed being my non-dominant shoulder as a right handed caster. I'm gonna be casting off my left side, okay? Like that. Now again, why would we cast off our left side? Well, I've got a cameraman standing here. Maybe you got one of those too. Now seriously, you might have a tree or a stump or a big boulder, uh, or you might have a strong up canyon wind. And when you try to cast off your right shoulder, the wind blows that line in your body and pretty soon you're wearing a hook for an earring, okay? That can happen as well. And I don't want that to happen to you. So we have casts that we use uh, off our left shoulder or right shoulder as we covered. And this one's gonna be called a cack handed snap tee. Now, for whatever reason, this cast tends to work best when you're angling downstream as a right hander. And again, I'm on river right, so as I look downstream, I'm on the right shoreline. And it has all the same parts. Again, we're gonna beat it in your head. What are the parts of the cast? The anchor, the D loop, see the D, and the cast, just like that. Anchor, D loop, cast. Now, Anchor follows the same rules. The fly has to be on the left side of me. And when I'm in swift water like this, I really need to have that fly upstream for me because the fly begins to drift a little bit. Uh, and I have to have the fly a rod length, a rod length and a half for myself, and it has to be on the right side of my body. And then right there, half my line on my right, half my line on my left, the end of my shooting head is about straight in front of me. So that is a really, really good anchor right there. So to make this anchor, rod loosely positioned in my hands so it can pivot, very gentle. I can actually take and wiggle the rod like this and make it flex. If I'm gripping it tight, that's much harder to do. So I've just got to 
you know, just fingers on the rod is all I've got. All right, so I come up to 45 and I'm gonna make essentially a, a, a half circle or a half horseshoe. Some people do it with more of a sharp, uh, like a number seven type shape. The main thing is we accomplish a couple of goals. One, the fly has to go over here to my left. The rod has to be pointed down here, half my line here, half my line there. This is one where there are lots of little analogies, lots of little formulas. Oh, just start at the top of the horseshoe and make a circle. It's a horseshoe on its side. Sure, that works. And you can take your finger, you can draw half a horseshoe, like a horseshoe on its side or you on its shot side. You can also do a slow buildup where you have kind of a, a backwards number seven. The main thing is the rod is pointed away from the fly. The fly's up here, your rod's down here. The rod has to be pointed downstream anytime you anchor a snap T so that then I can start my D loop and start building power by crossing my hands. So rod has to be pointed away. Here we go, I'm up, I'm gonna anchor. I ducked my rod tip under the fly, just like we learned on the other side. And then I, I send my D loop back and then fire away, hands tight right in here. And see this hand is right in near my belly. I'm not loosey goosey or all over the place with my hands flying around. Again, right here, if you're in the comfort of your own home, just get the bottom section of your rod out and go through these exercises. I'll do it right now. I'm sure somebody watching probably thinks I'm absolutely insane doing this right now, but I've got my rod here. I'm gonna come up, I'm gonna draw my little circle, and then I'm gonna drag back for my D-loop, come in here to my power stroke where my rod is aligned above my bicep, and snap my hand in just like this. Again, I drag forward in translation, pop forward for rotation to finish the shot. Important to know that for both double and single-handed casting. Okay, a couple more cack-handed snap tees. Here we go, so I'm up just like this. Duck that rod tip under that fly. You have to watch your fly, okay? So I wish I could get some slow motion video of that fly coming back at me, but I have to watch the fly in order to know what it's doing. Okay, there it is right there. It's in the water, it's anchored. I sweep back into my D loop and fire away just like that. So that is the river right cack handed snap T. That is gonna be, that covers the forecast that you have to know. Cack handed snap T for river right off my left shoulder. In fact, let's just do them all right now. A little bonus footage at the end of this chapter. So cack handed snap T that we just learned. That's a river right cast as a right hand dominant. Let me step out here. This is just review. Now I've got a double spay just like this off my right shoulder like that. If I were on the other side of the river, like this, and I were casting towards the camera from this other side, I've got my snap T, just like so, off my right shoulder for power like this. That's my other cast. And then the last one is gonna be my double spay off my left side, just like so. The cameraman loves it when I do that. But that's gonna be my double spay off my left side. You learn those casts, you're gonna go on to be an excellent spay angler, whether it's trout spay or salmon or steelhead, just get those four shots down pat.